Welcome to Cooking the Books, Recipes from the Fiction Kitchen. And today we're starting in the hairdressing salon here in Edinburgh, where Professor Joe Sharp has been cutting my hair. As those of you who have been following this sequence of films will know, this is not how my hair has been for the last few weeks. Uh, today we're going to explore a slightly different subject area. Up till now we've concentrated on main courses and savoury meals, but today we're going to look at the world of forensic science and what makes forensic science work. You're going to cook forensic scientists? No, I'm not going to cook forensic scientists. I think they'd be a bit tough. Mm. So over the years, I've spent a lot of time with forensic scientists, particularly Dame Professor Sue Black and Professor Neve McDade. And from them, I have learned that what makes forensics go round is cake. I have never been at a meeting with those two that didn't involve cake. And apparently, if you want to get into the good books of a forensic scientist, what you need to do is take some cake. So today I thought I would cook some cake, bake some cake indeed. Um, it's my birthday this week and so I think I'm legally entitled to a birthday cake. Unfortunately I've got to make it myself but there you go, you can't have everything in this world. Now you have to bear with me today because a couple of years ago I discovered I was intolerant of wheat. Now those who know me may say how did you narrow it down to just the one thing but since then I have not really done much in the way of baking. And so uh, this could go one of two ways. It'll either work or it'll only work. So bear with me and step into the kitchen where we'll explore the ingredients. So what I'm going to make for my birthday cake is a torta caprese, otherwise known to you and me as a chocolate and almond cake. It has no wheat flour in it, it just has ground almonds in it. Uh, and so here are my ingredients laid out before me. 200 grams of almond flour. Incidentally, those of you who have followed uh, my progress through the, the fiction kitchen will know that I'm not normally very precise in my measurements, but when it comes to baking you do have to be precise, otherwise you have some fairly shocking results. Um, so we start with 200 grams of almond flour there. There's sugar in two measures, 100 grams of sugar and 50 grams of sugar. And a tower of butter. Wow! 150 gram tower of butter. And we have four eggs here, and these eggs have to be separated uh, in order for uh, the recipe to progress properly. And I'm now going to attempt to do this on film. There's one other thing you've got to point out first, behind oh, you. Sorry, yes, of course. Behind me. So as you'll see, what we have here in the bowl is dark chocolate, 200 grams of it, and that's melting nicely in a metal bowl sitting on top of the agar which is quite intolerably hot in this weather. And I have to say, I apologise to people whose sensibilities are offended by my possession of an agar. In my defence, I will say, it came with the house. We didn't go out and buy it as such. So what you can do if you don't have an agar is the, the traditional method of the bain marie. Um, so you get a wee pan of boiling water and you put chocolate in a bowl sitting on the pan and gradually it will melt. Or you could just stick it outside in the sun. Well, indeed, you could just sit out in the sun, put it on the bonnet of your car, it'll fry. So, I'm going to attempt the separation of the eggs. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, um, you, see, you see people doing this on the telly, you know, and they're so uh, assured and they just break them in half and, and they, they juggle them between the two halves of the eggshell. That's not going to happen here. Hope your hands are clean. These days my hands are always absolutely biologically clean. So the yolk's in here, and the next one. It's really stuttery. Oh. Mind you, the level of tension in this kitchen at the moment. It never happens like this on the telly, does it? It's never like this when some celebrity chef is just whipping the egg yolks out. You never see uh, Nigella with snotters all hanging from her hands like that. She does it. Oh. 
She always does it so elegantly. I will. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that'll be me cleaning the kitchen later again, then. Just because you got promoted to hairdressing this week doesn't mean you get off the clean in the kitchen. <laughs> now I'm going to have to wash my hands. So, while I've been doing that thing with the eggs, the chocolate has just about melted here and I'm going to add the butter to the chocolate. That's a lot of butter. Says the queen of butter. Says the woman who thinks that globe artichoke is a vehicle for butter. It is indeed. Not today it's not. There's no butter left. If I look towards our shopping list, butter. So how come you don't just stick that in the pan? Yeah, how come you just don't stick that in the pan? You put chocolate in a pan, chocolate butter in a pan and melt it like you would normally with things. Because if you do that, you do that one, not properly, the chocolate will go granulated, quite possibly. This way, everything melts nicely into a buttery chocolatey paste. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just going to let that do away for a wee minute, as they say. Meanwhile, I'm going to add 100 grams of sugar to the eggs. Just check the recipe. Yeah, the 100 grams of sugar to the eggs. Also, to the egg yolks or the egg whites? The egg yolks. Well, you need to be specific. Could, I, could you pass me a fork, please? Sorry. Ill equipped here. Thank you. So I'm just going to. Put the fork through the egg so it doesn't fly there and pull it off. I'm going to add some of the sugar, bit by bit. What's the point of having a, a kitchen if you're doing it all by hand? That's for the meringue bit, the egg whites. I'm also going to add some salt at this point. Salt? Yes. I'm going to take a wee ground of salt. Should be about a quarter of a teaspoonful of salt. 22 grains. That's a lot. So essentially what you're doing with this is mixing rather than, you know, totally beating and whisking. And this is the point where I remember I should have the oven on. Heats up really quickly, don't worry. With a nice uh, yellow foamy, pale yellow richness here. I'm just going to check on the butter and the chocolate. Excuse me, what is the point of me carefully measuring my ingredients to the last gram if you go about sticking your finger in things? Jeez, oh, you cannot get the stuff these days. Now, this bit is nearly finished. The, bu the butter is now mm, amalgamated. Nice. Amalgamated, you like that, with the chocolate. Mixed. Amalgamated. Okay. More than just mixed, it's, it's become one. <laughs> oh, is this, is this another case of it losing its identity and uh -huh. whatever, like so, your potatoes? So what I'm going to do now is move this onto a cooler surface because it needs to be a bit cooler before you add the egg to it, otherwise what you get is chocolate and scrambled egg. Which, you know, there is a world in which that would be lovely, but this isn't that world, not today. So I'm going to take five. So I'm just going to try putting a wee bit of this into the mix, which I think is about ready to absorb the egg mix without it causing a problem. And that does seem to be okay. So, it now looks as if the, this is going to be just fine to add the rest of the eggs to the chocolate butter mix. Without getting an omelette. Without getting an omelette. It smells lovely. Yeah, do this reasonably swiftly. So we don't get clumpiness. Unless you're doing it with the arm that you've got your Fitbit on. <laughs> I going to think you've run a marathon. I'll take whatever I can get. So I can get the... Oh, lovely 
sugar the egg yolks into the chocolate and butter mix. The good thing about these silicon spatulas is you do get all the mix. The bad thing is you don't get to lick the bowl so. I know, I would have been so upset as a kid if they'd been invented. Yeah, I know. You still get pretty upset then. So there we go. All so, nicely mixed in together. And now we're going to add to this The almond meal, almond flour, groundy almonds, whatever you want to call it. Basically, buzzed up almonds. Is there no um, raising agent in this? No, just eggs. Oh, because you're going to whip, whip up the whites. Mm -hmm. God, I went out off to get baking powder for you. I know you did. You don't need it. I don't need it, but I appreciate the gesture. Really, everyone should have their own professor of geography to do all those tremendously helpful things around the house, like cut your hair and clean the kitchen floor. <laughs> there, you know, there are times I don't really feel you take me altogether seriously. I take you very seriously. She is a proper professor of geography, but just don't ask her where Kazakhstan is. Hope taking notes, Richard Osmond, don't ask her where's Kazakhstan. I do as well in that round as you do. Do I need to remind you of the Africa round? Listen, I'm not one of these people who thinks that Angola is in Egypt. I'll admit, I don't have a good sense of direction. No. So as you can see, this is starting to get a bit stiffer. You know, if this all turns out right, I'm going to be sending a link to the video to Prue Leith. But you, are you angling to get on Bake Off? Well, that might be quite entertaining. I'm not sure about you and a showstopper. <laughs> Presentation's not really your thing, but we'll, we'll really see with this. Thing, but you know, anyway, we'll see how this goes. On the other hand, you are very good at sort of double entendres around the your flurry buns. Yes. So, we've now got this lovely eggy, chocolatey, buttery batter. And what we need to do now is beat up the egg whites. So I'm going to turn this on and it will make quite a lot of noise. If you plug it in. If you plug it in. <laughs> if you plug it in, of <laughs> If you plug it in, I've got to dodge the new tube bullet there because the new tube bullet was occupying the socket. Right. Can't believe you wasted that joke. I know. A hand twist will do the job just as well. So are we going for uh, stiff peaks? Eventually, yeah. Now as you can see this has got quite foamy and what we're now going to do is fold in the rest of the sugar, the other 50 grams. Let's see if we can get that into stiff peaks. Now, the question is, are these stiff peaks yet? You're not trying that over my head. Oh, that looks nice. I love a meringue. Peak, isn't it? That looks... You know, as the videographer alluded to there, you know, when people do this on the telly... Dinny, I've cut your hair, it looks like... Dinny, Dinny! Oh, wait, that! Yes! <laughs> I can't believe you trusted that! I can't believe I did it either. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do now is... Maybe not do that. So... I don't we'll... want that bit to fall off. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll do that later. Just, just cut all that bit out. So, 
So what I'm going to do now is to fold this into the rest of the batter. Now, you don't do this with a spatula because you, the thing you don't want to do is to knock the air out of the egg whites. So you always use a metal spoon. A metal spoon? A metal spoon. Why is that? Because it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't know why, you just always use a metal spoon because it doesn't knock the air out of the... Does it matter what metal? Does it need to be like a silver spoon? No, it doesn't, only, only if you're terribly rich. I need to clean that spot. <laughs> I'm going to have to clean the kitchen. There's egg on the floor, there's chocolate batter on the floor. I'm just glad there's not all that, all that. Mm. Maybe we want to lick the spoon. Aye. Mm. So. Oh, that's really good. I'm now going to fold in the egg whites. The thing to do this with is just to do it gently and gradually. Because, as I say, what you're trying to do is to retain the air that's in the egg whites because that's what will help the batter to rise once you start cooking it. Is it going to rise or is it just going to keep its volume? How can it rise? I suppose the air bubbles could get bigger if they get hot. Yes. You know, this is not... I may have been talking about forensics, but I am not a forensic chemist. If you want to know the details of this, I suggest you contact Professor Neve McDade at Dundee University. Oh, she's going to thank you for that. <laughs> we'll probably explain to you what happens inside a cake when the egg whites start to do their business. She likes a cake. They all like cake. And I noticed that bit, I noticed that um, Karen's started using the the currency of baked goods and biscuits. Yes, I have adopted the idea of. Uh, of bribing forensic scientists with sweet things, but I have uh, altered it slightly. Uh, Karen's bribe of choice with the forensic scientists at Gart Kosh, Scottish Police Crime Campus, is biscuits. Um, and her go to gal there, Tanzan, uh, is a great aficionado of, of uh, the currency of IT skills and chocolate biscuits. So woe betide you if you turn up looking for a favour from Tamsin and you've not got a chocolate biscuit about your person. And poor Jason gets confused about Jaffa cakes. Yeah, well people will have to read the book to find out what happens with that. In the upcoming Karen Perry novel, Still Life, there will be a revisiting of the Jaffa cake controversy. Is it a cake? Or is it a biscuit? Or is it, in my view, something you didn't really want to put in your mouth? You don't like a Jaffa cake? I don't like a Jaffa cake, no. Is that because of you being intolerant? No, I didn't like a Jaffa cake before I was intolerant. Love a this Jaffa cake. Like oh, love a Jaffa cake. Oh, see, this is getting all lovely and yummy now. Do you remember when they did black currant ones? No. Oh, they were good. Why would I care about black currant ones? I don't like a Jaffa cake. I'm I thought sorry. it was just because you I'm don't like... i this is going to offend people, but I didn't like a Jaffa cake. I thought that's because you, you didn't really approve of chocolate orange. Well, I don't really approve of chocolate and orange. It's not my favourite combination. You know, Terry can keep his chocolate orange. So, yeah, this is starting to look really like a very lovely batter. So, what you have to so do... It's a wee bit streaky still. Should it still be a wee bit streaky? All right. It's, good. it's fine. Is it fine? It's absolutely fine. I might take the last wee bits of egg. Carefully, not... Knocking any air, air out of them, obviously. There we go. So, cake recipes generally call for a cake tin. In this particular instance, people recommend uh, an 8 to 10 inch sprung round cake tin with a removable bottom, which in our case we do not have. So uh, because our local supermarket used to have stopped selling uh, things to make cakes with, I suspect because everybody in Edinburgh has been out buying things to make cakes with, I've had to make do with a compromise, which is a foil tray, which is not round as you will see. I've lined it with baking parchment in my usual neat and, and uh, tidy way, and so what are you looking at like that for? Well, it's just that that, that side there isn't... It doesn't need to go all the way up. It's okay. fine. 
Okay. It's basically to stop it sticking to the bottom. Mm -hmm. So this is going to go into here. In big dots. Talk amongst yourself. This is the boring bit. You could just kind of pour it out, couldn't you? No, it's not got a pouring tendency. Hmm. Look, it's not got a pouring tendency. No, you would help it's moving slowly. You, you just need to help it. But you help it's it along. It's a moving lava field. It would be for a long time before it actually all emerged onto the, the tin. Now you're obviously going to put that into into the oven. I am. Are we able to, we can't use the uh, aga, can we, because it's too uh, hot? No, I mean, a lot of people do bake with their aga, but I, I don't feel confident. I, mean, I, want, I want to have a temperature that's controllable, really. And with the aga, you've got no control. Um, so what's the temp- I have one or two friends who've got agas. I'm quite, I'm quite astonished that they'll, 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 they have a, such an affinity for something that does not allow them absolute control. <laughs> I think we all know who I'm talking about here. <laughs> So what temperature should we have the oven set to? 180 degrees, 325 degrees at an old bunny. You said 375 earlier. Say, three, say 375 earlier, then that'll be right then, because I'm not looking at a bit of paper right this minute. Okay, so, so spread that out. <laughs> In an expert and even way. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to win Bake Off, are you? In Bake Off, I would have proper equipment, wouldn't I? I mean, you know. Well, you've got a KitchenAid, for goodness sake. That's yeah, what I have, like, proper cake tins and stuff. Mm. I really feel you should be modelling this on something forensic. Yeah, well, I haven't got anything forensic. I've just got an aluminium rectangular tray. So, this is now going to go into the oven. For how long? For 45 minutes or so. I say or so because you know after 45 minutes you take it out check it. With this cake you want to stick a toothpick or a skewer in after your 45 minutes or 40 minutes if like me you're impatient and it should have like one or two crumbs adhering to it. It's not going to come out completely clean and then you'll know that it's time to take it out. There we go. Onwards and upwards. It's only after it's eaten this I can lick my finger. Well, it's also going to be heated to a great high temperature and mm -hmm. that'll kill all germs. So the timer has just gone off. So I'm going to take it out of the oven to see how we're doing. It smells fabulous. It smells amazing. See when they can put smell on the internet, you're all going to be salivating. Here we go. Well, that looks surprisingly splendid. I have to say. Yeah. It's, it's, so now the all important. Like. Out it comes. Wee traces on the toothpick. This one's absolutely, absolutely clean. So I think that's ready. So now we have to, very difficult though it is, walk away till it gets cool. This is a cake. Absolutely don't take out of the tin until it's cool. So it's time for the big reveal. What's underneath the dish towel? Oh, it's a cake! So how you do this is you invert it onto there. You take the cake oh. off. And then you gently take off the baking parchments. Oh, that looks like a cake. Yeah. It looks like it's worked, Val. It does look like it's worked. And then, you invert it again. Oh, it's all wrapped up in a wee tea towel. Mm -hmm. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong is what's just gone wrong. It's oh just... dear. Oops. Oops. Oh, your showstopper. Yeah. Well, I think you can stick it back together again, can't you? I can probably stick it back together again. So we're going to cut this in half anyway, um, and, and make it a sort of sandwich. You're not going to measure it? I'm just going to judge with my eyes. Listen, my eyes are fine, they're not bloody, I don't need to go to Barnard Castle. That's not even. It's even 
nur noch. <laughs> Just cut that bit off, then I'll be even. We could, we could use it. Broken. Try See, it. See, we're doing this precisely as, 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 as I've done all my recipes, really. Mmm, oh god, that's good. Mmm. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm going to do is... Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. I've got some Philadelphia here. Other cream cheeses are available. Now, some people put icing sugar and all sorts into the Philadelphia to make it icing. But I think, because this is a relatively sweet cake, it's quite fine just to put the Philadelphia on as it is, because it's delicious. And it gives it that little bit of, in the way that you would use creme fraiche sometimes to cut through the sweetness, this has the same kind of effect. You wouldn't put jam or something on that layer? You could. Or maybe a wee bit of um, nut butter would be nice. No, it wouldn't. It would be like a Nutella. It would be too much. There's already nuts in this. You may have forgotten that we made this with nuts. Can't never have too many nuts. Here we go. That's not, that's it's not that. very much. That's just the middle layer. Put some more on since since the professor, always the critic, thinks there should be more. Is that better? You happy now? There's a wee bald spot in the middle. You happy now? Better. Good. <laughs> and then one goes, good God, let this be all right. The top bit, yay! So what I'm going to do now is put the top layer of Philadelphia on and then we're going to have a wee bit of decoration. What on earth would you put on a forensic cake, I wonder? You're not doing the sides then? No, I'm not doing the sides. Okay. Now I'm going to decorate it. Now, what we're going to do now is place the stencil on the cake. Oh. The stencil, which the professor has lovingly prepared. Just so and we don't get chocolate all over Philadelphia. And we're going to distribute over this stencil some cocoa from part of the professor's family silver. stupid we are okay so now i have to very carefully remove this yay hey! so here we go forensic cake happy birthday to you Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to the Queen of Crime. Happy birthday to you.